Hi team, and welcome to our Insights training webinar. My name is Laura, and I am one of the customer success managers here at Lightspeed. I'll be taking you through the training today. What is Insights? So Insights is one of our additional modules that you can add onto your O-Series point of sale. It gives you a view of the metrics that matter, gives you an idea of the data, and helps you to find new ways to grow. You can run through the drill downs, apply filters, access data on the go, share those insights and keep growing your business. Have a look and see what's happening, what's selling and when those peak periods and times are. A lot of the benefits of our reporting is you can view the metrics that matter, what is important to your business and what you want to track. Based on that data and things like most popular products, peak periods of the day, peak days of the week, you can find new ways to grow. You can find when you need to be better staffed, what products you should be pushing further, and potentially what products aren't selling and that you can take off the shelves. You can see a perspective that previously it would have been difficult or time consuming to access, and you can see trends in this sales data as well. In terms of our Insights subscriptions, we have a few different levels. We've got our light subscription, which gives you visibility on the fundamental numbers of your business. These are our basic reports that give you ideas of your sales split by reporting groups, and you can see the base data. We have Insights View, which gives you all the access of light plus additional reports, more of our premium reports, like our reconciliations, our products, our reporting groups, a bit more of a deep dive into all of that data. We have share, which gives you the ability to automatically schedule these reports to be sent. And we have custom, which allows you to take this data and build your own reports to suit your business needs. The benefits of our reporting is you don't waste building pause reports you depend on. We know what's important to your business. We know what's important to your company. And we've built our basic and premium reports based off that demand. You make sure that everyone who needs to be kept in the loop, everyone who needs to be updated has this information, whether that's on the go with our emailed reports or whether that's on the go with our Insights Live app. You can also create those custom reports that you know that your business needs, that data to track, that information that you want, and use that to continue to grow your business. Insights Live is our real-time app that you can download on your phone and you can access this data from anywhere. You don't have to be in store. You can be at home and you just want to check and see how the day is going. And this gives you the access of current sales. It gives you those predicted sales based off historical data and so much more information. So let's jump in. As you can see here, this is what we call our back office. Now, I'm sure you're all pretty familiar with this. Um, we can access insights from the back office in a couple of different spots. We can access it here via our quick access bar. We can also click up here on the left hand side and jump into our insights. But first, I'm going to show you one important function that is really key to have and really key to access and that's our reporting groups when we go into our products you can see that i've obviously got my product names my categories and i've also got this reporting group what reporting groups do is this allows you to track all of your products where potentially if you have products that you have in stock but you're not selling like your bottles of alcohol or particular ingredients that are part of your recipes you can add these into a reporting group to see that consumption you can add them into a reporting group to see what's popular, to see what's being used, and to better and more accurately track your data. Reporting groups can be added simply by clicking on reporting group and adding an existing one, or you can add a new reporting group in. You can make these at any time, either adding them one by one, or you can also bulk edit. So I can select multiple items, assign a reporting group, and bulk add that in. Now, unlike categories, you can only assign an item to one reporting group, but this also helps with the accuracy of that data. So things like alcoholic beverages, non-alcoholic beverages, food items, and merchandise. When I jump into my back office here, and I'm gonna jump into my insights module. So this is our insights. It's always gonna bring us to this home page. 
just taking a second to load. And you can see down here on the left hand side, I've got my menu bar. So this helps me to navigate through the reports that I want to look at. I can also see my recently viewed reports and popular dashboards. So these are key dashboards that we find a lot of our customers are running through things like our site summary, site reconciliation overview and our site overview. As you can see here, I've got my home, my reports, which are the reports that we can access from our light subscription, light speed payments, if you've signed on to use our light speed payment services, and then premium reports, which you can access from our insights view subscription and above. We've also got, if you're on our insights custom build from and my reports, which are the ones that you would have used to build. Down here on the left as well, you can see we've got our help and support button. When I click on this, I've got a couple of different options. I can go in and I can search our knowledge base. And it's always going to give me recommended pages that are relating to what I'm looking at. So in this case, it's you know enabling insights, getting around terminology, setting up reporting groups, all of these really key documents that are really going to help. And I can click on those and it will open up to my help page. You know, we've got this in here step by step with screenshots and information really easy to navigate and really easy to follow you've also got our 24 7 help and support where you can live chat with our support team or give them a call our support team are incredibly knowledgeable and they will be certainly more than happy to help with anything that you might need this is our insights module now when we open this up it'll always bring us here to the home page which has recently viewed by you which are the reports you've recently accessed, recently scheduled for anyone on our share or custom insights plans, popular dashboards, which are the ones that we tend to find our customers using the most, and recently added. So any dashboards that have been added by our product team into our insights module. For all of our customers from light, view, share and custom, you can all access our base reports listed here. Now, under base reports, we have things like snapshot, product sales, reconciliations, adjustments, purchase and wastage, and open orders snapshots, all of which have a really great overview of what's happening in your business. And we're just going to run through a couple of our key dashboards today. So I'm going to jump into our snapshot report, bearing in mind that sometimes insights can just take a moment to load as it is pulling in a fair amount of data from the operations of your venue. Now, when that opens up, especially if you have a multi-location venue, you just need to go in and select your site. So I'll go in and select a value. Now the preset time period is always in the last seven days. However, these filters at the top can be changed at any time. So say I wanted to see in the last seven weeks or months, I can change that here. Please just bearing in mind that we have a couple of differences here. We've got complete hours, and then we've got, for instance, hours. What this means is for say complete weeks, this would be the last seven complete weeks. So up to the last week that completed on a Sunday. Same with last complete days, it would be up to the last day that's complete, which would be the day prior. Whereas if we go the last seven days, it's going to include the data from today as well. So as there hasn't been sales recently, we're going to open this up a little bit more to the last four complete weeks. You can also see here that we have an inclusive and exclusive of tax tab. So this is always default to inclusive, but if you're looking to see your numbers exclusive of tax, you can also pop that in. And you also have the ability to select which register you're seeing the data coming from. So if you are operating multiple registers in your venue, you can have a look and see which register is processing through which sales. Clicking my refresh button up the top here. And we can see here on the data that's loaded in the last four complete weeks, we've had $4 total revenue, $3.50 average sale value across one sale. And because no guests have been allocated, it's zero total number of guests, so $0 average guest spend. As I scroll down, you can see here on this snapshot, I've got things like daily sales, which gives me my total per day. 
split of reporting groups, staff performance, and top selling products. That's why this makes a very great report and I would definitely recommend um, viewing in this one and saving it as a favorite. Now to save anything as a favorite, you just click the little heart next to the name to add it to favorites. And to view favorites, anytime you're in a dashboard, you can click the little folder and then you see here you've got a favorites and this is going to list in any of my favorite dashboards and I can just jump in between all of them just by clicking onto those there. Now if we go back to our reports tab, also just run through our product sales. So if I click into my product sales dashboard. Now each of these reports is called a dashboard and within each of these dashboards we have what we call tiles of data. And as you can see here in the data that's loaded it brings up for all of the sites so you can always go in and filter to show a specific site. And as I scroll down I can see reporting groups including tax, sales dollar value, percentage of quantity, I can see my top reporting groups, top selling categories that I have, sales by category, and then sales by product. So I have a list here of all my products and how many sales have gone through over the set period across all of those. And then at the bottom, I've got my list of staff as well. Now, each of these, like I said, is called a tile and that contains all of the data that you are looking for. And those are our general reports. For any customers that are using our Insights View, Insights Share or Insights Custom, you have access to our premium reports. If we look on the left hand side home tab here, when we're on our Insights module, and we click on premium reports, we can see that there's quite a bit of a breakdown here from company overview, adjustments, payments, purchases, account sales quite a few different areas that we can look at. Each of these tabs has multiple reports within it to look at. I'm just gonna outline a few key ones for you to see. However, I definitely encourage that you do a bit more of a deep dive and have a look to see what's best for you. And if you want recommendations, always reach out to your customer success manager or one of our support team who can help you further. When we click into company overview, we can see that this opens up straight to a dashboard. Now, this will give us an idea, especially if you are a company that's got multiple sites, this will give you an idea of the totals of all your sites together. So up the top, if you do have multiple companies, you can jump between them. In my case, I do. So I'm just gonna choose one. and clicking my update button, refresh my screen. Obviously we've got a couple of different options. So we've got date range, which can be changed. And we've also got inclusive, exclusive of tax, which can be changed as well, depending on how you wanna see those numbers presented. Now, as you can see for this particular site, we don't have any revenue or sales made in the last seven days. If I open this up to the last say three, months and click refresh. You can see that I've got a little bit more data here. You can see total revenue $36.45, sales made and average transaction value. We've got revenue by site, site summary. So it tells us, you know, state, site name, average transaction value exclusive of tax, tax amount, all of those sorts of things. And as we scroll down to the bottom, we also get our year to date summary. So total revenue, total amount of sales, monthly comparison this year versus last year, and year to date revenue by site. Got site summaries, reporting group revenue, quite a few different elements there that can really assist if you're, especially if you're looking to compare from site to site, or if you're looking to compare historical data as well. Another great tab that we have here is our site performance. When I jump into site performance, you can see that I've got a few different dashboards that I can select from. Site comparison, which is when, if you have multi-sites, you can just select a couple of sites that you wanna compare in particular. Uh, site summary which is one site at a time and you select the time period you're looking at. 
We've also got a couple of great ones here, which is service period comparison. You can see we've got breakfast versus lunch, lunch versus dinner. This gives us an idea, and this is a default period. So from 4 a.m. till 11 a.m. breakfast, 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. lunch, and 5 p.m. till midnight is dinner. Um, comparison of performance across different periods of time, including things like revenue and total sales, items ordered, all of those sorts of things. We're going to jump into site summary. And when I jump into my site summary, this will look quite similar to my company overview. Again, I select my name, date range, inclusive, exclusive of tax. I'm going to go the last one, complete years, just so I get a little bit of extra data here. And I'm going to refresh that data. So now that that's loading in, you can see total revenue across that period selected, which is the last one complete year, 91 sales, average guest spend, We've got hour of the day performance, and this tracks in revenue and sales. So we can see the difference between the two. We've got day of the week performance. So across the given period, I can see what days are the most popular. Here we can see Thursdays were the most popular day in terms of total revenue. However, in terms of total sales, I had the most sales on a Wednesday. We've got order types as well. So if you are running dine-in, takeaway, delivery, it will compare all of those, give you the amount of sales per type um, and the percentage of revenue and percentage of total sales that are coming from each of those categories. It also breaks down into top selling pods categories, reporting groups, which products are the most popular as well, um, and which of your staff members are selling the most. Also, if you're using customer data it, and you're adding customers into the orders, it will give you customers by spend, which registers being used as well. Um, and at the bottom, we've got summary of adjustments. So this will actually give us an idea of adjustments that are being used. So we can have a look at, okay, have, has there been a surcharge applied? Has it been a public holiday and I'm doing manual surcharging, you know, total value of discount supplied. So in a given period, $300 worth of discounts that could bear, vary from, you know, 100% discounts to 10% discounts have been used. And then if we scroll down, if I had had adjustments in here, it would give me reasons, the number of time that particular adjustment has been used. So if you do have a custom adjustment, for example, seniors adjustment, so seniors get a discount of 5% off all orders. You can see how many times it's been used, the total value. So say it was, you know, across a period, $100 that was reduced, regular adjustment amount and custom adjustment amount. As we keep going along into our premium reports, another key tab that I find a lot of customers find useful is our product performance. Now under product performance, you can see we've got quite a few different reports here. Anything from individual product performance. So you select a particular product. If there was a particular product that you wanted information about and how it's performing, you can have a look into that. Um, you can have a look at a product if you share a particular product across multiple sites, how it's performing compared to particular products. So if you've got a couple of products and you're like, you know what, these are quite similar. I don't know that if that I want both of them on the menu, you can compare them and see which one's performing better to help you cull that decision. And we also break down into things like our reporting group performance um, and product combinations. This is understanding common combinations of products that are sold together. This can be useful data if you're looking to create potential upsells, meal deals, um, or doing specials. So what we'll jump into is our reporting groups overview. And again, like any other report, we can change the date range that we're looking at, site name, company name. This one also has some additional ones where we can look at, okay, is there a particular order type, day of the week, hour of day. So let's change that date range to the last one. Yeah. 
you can see while this data is loading that we have a few different tabs in here. So we've got reporting group split. So I can see, okay, which particular reporting group is the most popular? As I can see here, we've got order types as well. So each of the colors corresponding with a different order type. Uh, reporting group breakdown as well. I can see, okay, I can actually extend these. So if I open it up, I can go, okay, this is a reporting group name. These are the products under that reporting group and this is how much has been sold. We can see hour of the day performance, which reporting group performs the best. Weekly trends, adjustment details. So what reporting groups are getting the most adjustments on them? You can see where potentially mistakes are going wrong or where deals are being used. And all of these are sort of key areas that you can use to, I guess, figure out better where your business is going, what's performing, and where changes can be made. Under our premium reports as well, another great one would be if you do have an integration with systems such as Deputy, you can utilize that under staff performance. Um, otherwise, staff performance will give you an idea of, so when your staff are logging in, when they are logged into the pause, which staff are selling the most, which staff is most active you know you can use this to figure out oh you know there are staff members that aren't using the pos at all what's happening there are they sharing codes um lots of different information that can be pulled from here so staff by revenue you're looking at average guest spend average sale so all of these areas and then a really important one which is which staff applied the most discounts and which staff applied the most surcharges so you can see who's putting the most discounts in who's Discounting food, is it someone that I expect? Potentially it could be someone that you don't. Helping identify those bits of information that are quite important for the business. Also when tips are being processed, which staff are receiving tips as well. One really key area that I'm sure every business will be using is reconciliations. So when I jump into reconciliations, this is all of our site reconciliations that are completed. So end of day, when you cash off or end of shift, when you cash off, when a reconciliation is being conducted, how's that reconciliation gone? We can look at it at a site level. We can look at a company level and we also can select particular reconciliations that have been completed to look at them in more depth. Just for an overview, let's look at site. And this is where you'd come if you're potentially a little bit concerned about how reconciliations are going. If you think, them, the, is there something missing? Is there something that seems off? Have a look in here and then you can see what's been going on. Okay, let's have a bit of a look. So you can see things that are starting to populate which venue I'm looking at, how many reconciliations have been completed? What is our variance? Revenue summary. You can see when reconciliations were made. You can see that only a couple were actually made here. And underneath you can see that there was a variance. It splits our revenue by category as well as reporting group. We can see what's our main payment method. In this case, it was only cash. Uh, which registers are being used, staff members, and then we have a bit of a deep dive. So if we have multiple payment methods, we can see, oh, okay, perfect. I have this amount coming from this payment method. I have this amount coming from this payment method. Have I got um, what's recorded? Do I have a variance? Are there any issues? Um, and then the different reconciliations that have been done. This is where you can get those reconciliation numbers to look at particular reconciliations into further depth. If you do want to do a little bit more of an investigation, I have a little bit more of a look for everything. We also have, if you're using some of our extra modules, like our purchase or our produce module, I can click in and see purchase insights. So this can give you an idea of what you've purchased, has the price changed, you know, how often are you purchasing if you are a sort of an ops, ops manager who's overviewing quite a number of sites. This will let you have a look into those things without necessarily having to be on site or having to go into the purchase module to see everything that's going on. So you can see purchases versus sales. How much are we spending to buy stock versus how much revenue is coming out of that stock that we're selling? Um, 
how many products have been ordered, what products are we ordering the most frequently, what products are, are coming in, what products are we running through, um, top products by quantity or by order value, and then supplier summary, which suppliers are we using the most? And then procurement time just gives us, okay, what is the time between when I make my purchase order and when that's delivered and I mark that as received in the system. And those are some of our premium reports. As I said, I definitely encourage anyone to jump in and have a further look. We've got things like deleted orders, wastage, account sales. Um, it just depends on what your business is using, but our customer success team, as well as our support team, will be more than happy to point you in the right direction if you have any questions or if there's anything in particular that you're looking for. For customers that have signed up to our custom insights, module, you'll be able to access custom build for our insights and for the data that's being pulled through. The way that we can access this is when we are on the insights tab, you'll see that you have two additional tabs here. We've got build from and my reports. Now my reports is where you're going to be saving all of your reports. So for example, if I go into my reports and click on my name, you'll be able to see I currently have one report saved that I've created and that's listed here. When I'm looking to build a custom report, first I click build from and you'll see quite a number of options come up and these will look pretty similar to the options that you see in our premium reports tab. Now each of these is what we call a look and a look is a collection of data. So for example, sales would be sales data, sales details would be that sales data with a little bit of extra information like you know, how many of each product was consumed um, and, and a bit further of a breakdown. For payments, you can break it into things like payment types. Please do bear in mind that each of these is a separate set of data. Um, so you do you need to use whichever specific look has that data that you're looking for. Generally, I would say the majority of builds would be utilizing our sales details. So we're gonna build a custom report together and just run through some of the basics. So if I click on sales detail, it's gonna load through and open up to essentially a, a blank slate, a blank report because at the moment we haven't got any data that's selected. Now, when we look at this, I know that it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit. So at the top, we've got filters. So these are the filters that we've selected. So you can see, for example, common filter that's used is sales closed date. So sales closed in the last, for example, the default is seven complete days. You can do is on a particular day, is in a range of days, is in the year of, month of is in the previous say week if you were building if you just wanted to see okay I want to create a report that always shows me what happened the previous week so for example I want to look at is the previous week the second field is visualization so when we actually add some data in this will show our visualization and this is where we can select how we want our data to be displayed and our third section here is the data itself so for example, I want to build a report that shows me a bit of a better breakdown of the categories that I'm selling. So what I could do, if you've got multiple locations, of course you wanna add things like which site. Now you can see here that we've got a few different groups. For example, under location, this is where I'd find things like my site name, or company name if you're running multiple companies. So I can go, okay, I want to break this down and I want to filter just particular sites. So this is when we just want to filter and we don't necessarily want to see the name of those sites, we click filter by, and this is going to add it into our filter section. Whereas if I'd clicked on the whole thing, you can see it adds it into my data section. So I'm just going to remove that one. So I just want to look at the site called Pinker's Pizza. From here, we can see we've got things like payment data, tags, common one that you'll be using is sales data. So when I click on sales data, you can see as I scroll, I've got my sale close date and I've got a split called measures. So these are essentially measurable variables. So amount sold, quantity. So I think I want to go, okay, how many of this has been sold? And I want to see my total exclusive of tax. So the total amount my exclusive of tax. The really great thing here is as well, if you are looking for something in particular and you're not quite sure where to find it, you do have a search bar. So I can click in here and go, okay, I want to have category. 
And as I type that in, you can see, oh, this one's under products and I want my category name to be popping up. Once I've got all the variables that I want, you can actually view and see which ones are being used by clicking in use, just to double check. Also, if you want to remove a particular one and you're not quite sure where it was, you can go to in use and just click and that will remove that there. Once you've got all of the pieces of data that you want to see, we go up to the top and click run. And this is going to process through and generate the data that we're looking for. Usually just takes a minute to process in. So for example, in this case, there's no results. So maybe I'll go in the previous year. So let's have a look and see, okay, in the previous year, let's pull some of this data. And here we go. In this case, it's defaulted to a column graph and it's got the two columns here, total amount sold and total exclusive of tax. But I can change that, for example, into a table. I could put that on a line graph. Can't do it with a pie graph because it's got too many variables, but say I just wanted to look at the amount sold. So let's get rid of total exclusive of tax and let's rerun that report and see if we can pop that one into a pie graph. And there we go, I can see, okay, 63% uncategorized, bagels were 2.71%, cocktails 4.18. Now, once I've got this data, I do have the ability to save it. So I can go explore actions, save. And if I already have a dashboard created that I wanna save this to, I would go to an existing dashboard. And then I would be able to go, okay, in my folder, I have a dashboard called category sales breakdown and save it in here. Otherwise, if I wanted to create a new dashboard, I would go save as a new dashboard. And I always wanna save this in my folder so that I can access it. And I can go, category sales last year and click save. And this is gonna create a new dashboard for me. Then I can go view dashboard and open up this new dashboard that I've created. You can see this blue bar at the top that says cancel and save, which is indicating that I'm currently editing my dashboard. Now you can see at the top, I've got these filters. Now these filters are gonna, whenever I create a new dashboard default to whatever filters are attached to that first data set that we've created. You can add new filters at any time. You can also go in and edit these filters at any time by going filter menu and edit. So if you wanted to say change the default, oh, I don't wanna see it for that. I wanna see it for Counter Cafe. And I can click update. And then of course, update my sales data. There we go. And that's brought that in here with coffee, 78.45%, and then I can click save. Now, once this has been made, this can be accessed from your folder. Again, that's just on the sidebar here, clicking on my reports and the folder with your name. If you do have a company and you're looking to share these sorts of information between multiple people, you can speak to your customer success manager or your account manager, and we can look to arrange for you to have a folder made that can be shared between multiple users. When I'm in here, I also have the ability to edit my dashboard. So for example, I have this data and I wanna see it in a little bit of a different way, but I don't wanna get rid of this particular tile. I can actually click on the three dots and I can duplicate it. So I've just made a complete copy of that data. Now I can click and I can edit. And I want to see this as a table so that I can actually see the numbers instead of those percentages. So I can change that visualization to a table and click save. And then I can always just change the name here if I want to. And always saving those dashboards as I'm changing them. And now I've got both of those. Once we've created dashboards, we do have the ability as well to go in and schedule them to be delivered. So I can click the dashboard actions, schedule delivery, 
and I can set up for this to automatically be sent to me. So I can go, okay, I want this on a monthly basis. On the first of the month, I want it nice and early in the morning, so 7 a.m. And then we can also change the filters in here as well. So if I go into filters, I want to see the last 30 days. So I want to see a whole month prior. And then I can click save. And that's going to schedule a delivery to be sent through. If you want to check to make sure that it's working or that it's going to come through correctly, or you just want to see what it looks like, you can click send now and that will automatically send that through to your inbox. Now, I know sometimes that we have a number of our premium reports where they have some really great data, but you don't necessarily want the entire dashboard. What we can do here is we can explore those existing dashboards, those existing pieces of data, and then save them into these custom reports and save them into our own reports. So I can go under site performance and site summary. I think it's really great that I can see hour of the day performance, but I, I don't want all of the rest of this. So I can click on three dots in the corner and I want to explore here, explore the data that's there. So this is going to open up that, that look, that explore that we were editing earlier. And you can see that it's got, if we open up our filters, it's got all those variables there already. And if I go to in use fields, it's already got all of this data selected. So in that case, I can go explore actions, save to an existing dashboard. And I'll pop a name on it, hourly performance in my folder. And I want to save it to our category sales last year. And I want to save that to the dashboard. It's always going to give me a green bar, which helps me to go directly to where I'm headed. And I can jump onto here and there's my hourly performance one here. Now you can see that at the moment that one's still loading. And these filters at the top should automatically apply to these new tiles that are added. If we want to check, we can always go in and go edit and see which tiles are getting updated. So you can see here, category sales last year, that tile is getting updated as well as amount sold and hourly performance. So now we can see that that's loaded. We can see amount of sales as well as total revenue. And this will be taking across the entire year. And that's how we save an, an existing piece of data from potentially another dashboard and save it into a custom report that we can then have automatically delivered. So if you do have quite a few bits and pieces from the existing reports that you like, but you don't want to have to schedule or you don't want to have to pull the entire report, you can just take those bits and pieces that you want and put them into a custom report and schedule that to be delivered to you. Just making sure that any time we make a change, we're clicking save. And that is how we can go through and edit custom reporting. Please bear in mind that at any time, if you do get stuck, we do have an excellent support and customer success team who are more than happy to assist. And you can always reference back to this video to have a look.